I'm Parikshit Hegde and I'm a PhD student at the University of Texas at Austin. I'll be presenting our work titled Achieving Almost All Blockchain Functionalities with Polylog Rhythmic Storage. This is joint work with Robert Streit, Yanni Georgiades and Sriram Vishwanath who are also at UT Austin and Chaya Ganesh who is at the Indian Institute of Science. There are two keywords in our paper title, Blockchain Functionalities and Storage. I'll start by briefly describing storage. Blocks that are old aren't accessed often. Even when they're accessed, it is not critical that they're read fast from storage. Therefore, old blocks can be stored in slow storage devices such as hard disks. We'll call such storage as cold storage. But several blockchains today use a summary of the blockchain called the state in order to speed up the validation of transactions. Examples of the state include UTXO and account balances of all the users. It is critical that the state is passed quickly in order to speed up transaction validation. Therefore, the state is stored in fast storage devices such as RAMs. We'll call such storage as hard storage. The main focus in our work is to optimize the cold storage of old blocks. But at the end of the presentation, we'll highlight how our work can be combined with other existing works to also optimize hard storage of states. Next, I'll describe the other keyword in the title that is blockchain functionalities. A node in a blockchain may have several functionalities as shown here. One is transaction validation. When a new transaction is submitted to be added to the blockchain, the node checks if it is a legal transaction with respect to the blockchain and thus can be added to the blockchain. Second is block validation. Given a newly mined block, the node checks if the block is valid with respect to the blockchain and otherwise follows all the rules of the blockchain protocol. Third, given a state, the node checks whether the state is a valid summary of the blockchain. Fourth, a node may be mining blocks for the blockchain. Fifth, given two competing chains, the node is able to correctly select the main chain. Next, when a new node enters the system, the existing nodes relay a copy of the blockchain securely to the new node. Seventh, when a when a client wants to query if a particular transaction is included in the blockchain, the node answers the query with a verifiable proof. Now suppose that a client was provided a malicious payment proof by an adversary. A different node may be able to verify the validity of the proof for the client. Having described all the functionalities, let's take a look at some types of blockchain nodes their functionalities and their storage requirements. Here is a table showing some types of nodes. First is a full node which stores the entire blockchain and the state. Since it stores all the information corresponding to the blockchain, it is able to perform all the functionalities that we just described. However, its storage requirement is very large and grows in the size of the blockchain. Here, B is the number of blocks in the blockchain at any point in time. The next type of node is a light node, which has all functionalities except for bootstrapping other nodes and serving payment proofs. Its storage requirement is much smaller than the full node, but it still grows in the size of the blockchain. Next is what we call a coin prune node. I'll describe this node type in some more detail in the following slide. For now, we note that it has the same storage requirement as a light node and additionally it is able to bootstrap other coin, node, other coin prune nodes as well. The next type of node called light client is only interested in verifying payments made in the blockchain. Unlike previous nodes, these only require storage that is polylogarithmic in the size of the blockchain. Now, our contribution called hybrid nodes has the same functionalities as a coin prune node, 
but only requires as much cold storage as light client. Our protocol is based on a light client protocol called NipoPow, and so we'll also summarize NipoPow in a couple of slides. We want to note that there was a concurrent work titled Mining in Logarithmic Space, which is very similar to our work. However, there are some crucial differences which we'll highlight in this presentation. Okay, let's start by summarizing CoinProne. In CoinProne, pass some number of blocks from the tip of the blockchain, called the tail, only block headers are retained. Since all the transaction information is not retained, it may be hard to verify the validity of a state. To circumvent this issue, a verifiable commitment to the state is stored at each corresponding block. Therefore, the validity of a given state may be verified by comparing against the commitment stored in the latest block. Notice that all the block headers are still stored, making the storage requirement to be in the order of B, where B is the number of blocks in the blockchain. Our idea is to take this model as a starting point and further reduce the number of block headers that need to be stored. To do so, we use the idea from NipoPow, which we will describe next. NipoPow stands for Non-Interactive Proofs of Proof-of-Work. Recall that in proof-of-work blockchains, each block hash needs to have at least t leading zeros, where t is a pre-decided number. Naturally, some of the block hashes may have more than t leading zeros. Say a block's hash has at least t plus mu leading zeros for some non-negative integer mu. Then we'll call this block a mu super block. In the example figure shown, we have 15 blocks and we show the corresponding value of mu within each block. It can easily be shown that a mu super block is 2 to the mu times harder to find than a regular block. This is the key idea that lets us get rid of some of the block headers. First, in the example figure, let's raise the height of each block proportional to its super block level. Now, from each block, we form a link from it to the latest super block of each level. For instance, looking at this level 3 super block, there is a link to the latest level 0 super block level 1 super block and level 2 super block. Now notice that if we get rid of all level 0 super blocks, the remaining blocks still form a chain that we can traverse through, thanks to the new links that we have introduced. Moreover, notice that 8 blocks remain and since all these blocks are 2 times harder than a regular block, this chain represents approximately the same amount of proof of work as the original chain. The original chain had 15 blocks, therefore it represented a proof of work of 15. This chain has 8 blocks, each one being 2 times harder, so it represents a proof of work of 16. The original work on this uses this idea to construct light clients. We use this idea to reduce the storage of hybrid nodes using a protocol called trimming. Trimming is an iterative application of a NipoPow style algorithm. Firstly, certain number of blocks at the tail of the chain are retained completely. In the rest of the blockchain, only block headers are retained. Moreover, the chain here is split into different level ranges. A level range mu is like a nipo pow of level mu. That is, it retains super blocks of level mu. In the example figure, we have shown an instance of a trimmed chain. Notice in the expansion of level range 2, super blocks of level 2 are retained and lower level super blocks have been deleted. At this point, we want to highlight that the idea of splitting the chain into multiple level ranges 
is novel compared to the concurrent work mining in logarithmic space. In their work, the authors construct a NEPO power of a single level at any point in time. We don't have a rigorous proof, but we believe that allowing for multiple level ranges leads to reduced storage in practical settings. Okay, now let's look at how trimming is applied iteratively. Trimming is attempted at regular intervals of time. The example figure shown here is the same chain as the previous slide, but after a few more blocks have been added to the tip of the chain. Let's say that the that trimming is attempted at this point. First, we check if it is possible to trim the chain from the start of the chain to the start of the tail to a level that is one higher than the current highest level. That is, in this example, this level is level four. Now we have a condition that checks if it is possible to securely trim to level four. This condition is a bit technical and I'm going to skip explaining the condition in this presentation. Let's say for this example, the condition says no. Then we reduce the level by one and, the, and then check the condition another time. Let's say that the condition still replies no. Then we further reduce the level by one and set the new range to be from the start of the current level two range to the start of the tail of the chain. Now let's say that the condition says yes, it is possible to securely trim to level range 2. Then the trim algorithm is called for this range, giving us the new trim chain. Again, the details of the trim protocol are a bit technical and I will skip the details for this presentation. All the details can be found in our paper. Now since several block headers are deleted in the trimming protocol, it is going to reduce the storage requirement of nodes. Particularly, we prove a result that under the absence of a particular kind of an adversary and a regular application of the trimming protocol, only polylog B number of block headers are retained, where B is the number of blocks in the underlying blockchain. The requirement for the absence of an adversary is an artifact of the Nepopau algorithm, and this requirement was also present in the original work on Nepopau. However, the concurrent work mining in logarithmic space claims to not require the absence of an adversary for succinctness. We do not have such a result in our work, but we note that Practically, it might not be economical for an adversary to repeatedly expend resources just to hurt the succinctness of a trimming protocol. Now we are ready to describe the operation of a hybrid node. The hybrid node employs trimming iteratively to reduce cold storage. It also retains the state at the tip of the chain and a state commitment for the corresponding state is stored at every block. Therefore, the validity of the state at the tip of the chain can be verified, although the hybrid node does not store all transaction information. This is a similar idea to the one used in coin proof. Let's now look at the functionalities of a hybrid node. Since it stores the state at the tail of the blockchain, it can perform transaction validation, block validation, state validation, and mining. Now, I haven't described this in the presentation, but we also propose a chain selection algorithm that, given two trim chains, selects the main chain consistently according to the length of the underlying chain. And since hybrid nodes can perform chain selection and state validation, they can also bootstrap other hybrid nodes into the system. So when bootstrapping on another node, they need to prove that they have 
the main chain which the which the bootstrap node checks through chain selection algorithm and then they need to validate the state which the bootstrap node can also perform also using the chain selection protocol hybrid nodes can verify payment proofs this is because most payment proofs usually contain a proof of the proof of work of the underlying chain and hybrid nodes are able to verify the proof of the under proof of work of the underlying chain using chain selection in our work we perform a rigorous analysis of the security of hybrid nodes and the trimming protocol in this presentation i want to highlight one aspect of the security analysis consider the example shown in the figure the black chain is the honest chain and the red chain is the adversary's chain dash blocks indicate that only block headers are stored for those blocks and curved lines indicate that it is an interlink between super blocks possibly skipping several deleted blocks in between in this scenario the adversary has successfully created a fork from a block that is in the trimmed portion of the chain we'll call such a scenario a trim attack here is why this attack is very dangerous since the trim portion of the chain does not contain all blocks and moreover does not contain any transaction information the hybrid node cannot verify the state transition from block b to block b1 therefore the adversary can permanently alter the state of the chain to anything it desires for instance it could transfer all the bitcoin to its account moreover the adversary needs to launch this attack only once in the entire operation of the blockchain protocol in order to steal all the money therefore we want an assurance that an adversary cannot launch a trim attack at any point in the execution of the blockchain indeed we prove that if the hybrid node uses at least polylog b storage the hybrid node the the adversary can never launch such an attack moreover if the hybrid node uses any lesser storage the adversary can eventually launch a trim attack with probability 1 therefore in a sense the storage requirement for the hybrid node is near optimal finally we comment on how hybrid nodes can be used in conjunction with stateless blockchain technology to simultaneously optimize both hot and cold storage stateless blockchains are a technique to optimize the hot storage of states and they work as follows in the left figure is depicted the transaction validation process of a regular blockchain the blockchain node stores the state for example the list of all the account balances and the client sends their signed transactions to the node which the node verifies against the state but since the state can grow very large in stateless blockchains nodes only store a short commitment to the state then the clients along with their signed transaction also provide a proof that verifies the validity of their transaction against the state commitment here the nodes save on hot storage but the clients have to maintain proofs for their accounts stateless blockchains can be used by hybrid nodes as long as clients remain consistently online to update their proofs This may be a realistic assumption as current works already suggest that clients delegate the job of updating proofs to dedicated proof serving nodes. To conclude, we proposed a method to optimize the cold storage of blocks. Our proposed node type hybrid nodes only store order polylog b blocks as compared to con the conventional order b blocks. Practically speaking, Bitcoin's block header chain is currently about 100 megabytes in size. Trimming could reduce the size to the order of hundreds of kilobytes. Now, 100 megabytes might not seem like a lot, but it may matter in case a node wants to store multiple blockchains or in case of high throughput blockchains where the chain grows really fast. Additionally, we suggest that hybrid nodes may use stateless blockchain technology to further optimize the hard storage of the state. 
Practically, Bitcoin's UTXO set is about 4 gigabytes in size. Stateless blockchains would only need order of kilobytes to store their state commitment. Thank you for listening to the presentation.